What's poppin' people? Welcome back to another video. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and also hit the like button if you guys have been enjoying the content. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to catch 15 times more bass any time of year, any location. I'm talking ponds, I'm talking rivers, I'm talking big lakes, I'm talking stock ponds, I'm talking pressured ponds. Any fishery, you're gonna be able to catch fish on these techniques. I'm excited to talk about this today because a lot of you guys have been asking about more tip videos. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna hop into one today. We're gonna to be talking about a few different rigs and certain ways to fish them and also color selections. I think that's very important. I know a lot of you guys are probably avid bass fishermen, but there's one thing I figured out about bass fishing or fishing in general is there's so much information to learn. Like you could be one of the most experienced fishermen, Kevin Van Dam, for instance, and listen to a random person's video and end up learning some tips just because they might fish differently than you do. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a few things that help me catch more fish that I can possibly share with you guys and you can go out on the water and catch even more fish. So now we're gonna go ahead and rig up on my rod. This is actually a mock crush by Luz. This is the older rod, this is the newer reel, the new and improved. You guys, this isn't on the market yet, but let me tell you, this is a bad. And by bad, I mean really good. I love the color on it, it's just slick. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. That's not the video to talk about it, but if you guys are wondering what pound line I have, this is 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I use between 15 to 20 pound. Me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of 15 because I tend to break off a lot. Um, I like using 17, I'm a big fan of 20 as well if I'm flipping heavy cover, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm gonna get a standard EWG. This is actually a four out. These are stout wide gap hooks by six cents. If you guys wanted to get a discount, you can. I'll pop my code up on the screen. We'll be talking about some of their products in today's video as well. We're gonna go ahead and tie this up on this rod. And if you guys are wondering what type of knot I, I rig up, it's a basic uni knot. And if you guys wanna learn how to tie this, I actually have a video on my channel. If you can just go to YouTube and type in like kicking their bass, um, best fishing knot, you can go watch that video and learn how to tie this knot. But it has proven one of the strongest knots out there. Wet my line, cinch it tight, grab the pliers, cut my tag in. We're gonna be rigging up the first bait and we're gonna be teaching you how to throw it. This is a very basic bait. Probably all you guys already know about this, but let me tell you, this is a bass fishing slayer right here. And it's very basic. Like I said, it's actually the Zoom Super Fluke. So let's talk about this and let's talk about how to catch some more fish on it because like I said, everybody fishes differently. We have some pearl white Zoom Super Flukes right here. And then we have some pearl white super flukes right here with the chartreuse tail. So let me, let's me let talk about this for a minute. Depending on where you're fishing, dirty water, clear water, whatever it is, this is, this is the rules that I live by. Cloudy conditions, clear water, I like to use a basic pearl white fluke. If it's sunny in clear water, they make a color called white ice. It's white on the bottom and then it has translucent on the top and it's got some glitters in it and it's really sparkly. I like that in, in, on a sunny day in clear water. They seem to eat that a lot better, but that's all in experimentation. When you go out in the water, you're gonna have to figure out what color they want, but cloudy conditions, I like pearl. And then on the sunny days, I like that white ice color. So now let's talk about dirty water, which is today I'm in the rivers. I fish a lot of rivers out here in the Savannah, Georgia area. I'm in South Georgia. Um, it's a lot of dirty water. Now, let me tell you something I've found that's very good out here. A lot of you guys that live around here already know are gonna watch this and go out on the river and try it, but go try it, you'll catch some fish. So this is actually the pearl white fluke with chartreuse on the tail. Let me show you this. In dirty water, I've had a lot of luck with this one. As you guys can tell right there, basic pearl white fluke, and it's just the tail is dipped in chartreuse. Dirty water, this thing slays them, especially if you're in really muddy water. I just seem that I catch a little bit more fish on it. Like I said, you can go with the basic pearl. That's gonna work just, you know, probably just as good but there's something in the back of my head that tells me they love this little chartreuse one. I just think I catch a lot of fish on it. I don't know if it's something mentally, but previously I've caught a ton of fish on the white and chartreuse and dirty water. That's something to keep in mind. So I'm actually just gonna take one of these pearl white flukes right here, very basic. We're gonna take my four out EWG. You can also rig this on a three out. These are just what I had. I'm very basic when it comes to fishing. So when you rig this thing up, you're gonna stick the hook you got the fluke right here, got the hook right here. You're gonna stick the head of the bait through the hook, just like that, okay? Now we're gonna break through the bottom, once it's rigged all the way up right there, just like that. Now we're gonna slider bait up the hook, as you guys can tell. Once you get to the top, we're gonna rotate the bait where the top is on the top of the hook. And we're gonna slide that bait all the way on top of that eyelid right there, boom. Just like that. So now you're free. So this is what you need to do right here to get your bait 
perfectly weedless. So what I usually do is I'm going to take my fluke and I'm going to lay it next to my hook. So you have the front of your hook right here and you have the back of it right here. Right here where this back aligns to the bait, that is exactly where you're going to want to penetrate the point of the hook. So right here on the end, it aligns right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to line my bait up. All right, that's where I need to penetrate it. Boom. Penetrate the hook through the bait, just like that. And now what we're going to do, so you have this little point. Last thing you want to do is have this out because at the end of the day, if you're throwing this around some grass, if you're throwing it around lay downs, any type of cover, you're going to get snagged. So you want to make this weedless. Now we're going to push the point of the hook into the bait by bringing the bait up, sticking it into that hook. So right there, you got a weedless fluke right there, weightless and weedless. So this bait is gonna go perfect through any vegetation. It's gonna go through the cover, great as well. And you're not gonna get hooked up. Like I said, if this hook's exposed, you're gonna be hooking all types of cover. You're gonna be hooking that vegetation. You don't wanna deal with that. So you wanna bury that hook in the bait. And that's what's gonna keep it weedless. So this is the rig that we're gonna be using today. What I love about the fluke rig is it's almost a moving bait and a slew moving bait at the same time because there's multiple different ways you can work it. It's very versatile. You know, when people work a fluke, they think you just throw it out there and you're twitching it back. Um, some days I want to throw it out there and just leave it there. So let's go ahead and hop up here real quick. By the way, we're going to be talking about multiple different baits today. This isn't the only bait that we're going to be talking about, um, but I wanted to demonstrate this one first. So let's go ahead and hop up here and give this thing a cast. All right, so we have a rig right here. We're going to be casting it out and we're going to work it one specific way right now. And this one's very basic. A lot of you guys are already going to know it. So the spot that we're fishing right here, we got a bunch of cypress knees laying down in the water. We also got some lay downs, you know, just basic cover that's laying along the bank. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this fluke, we're going to cast it right up on that cover. Cast it up there, we're going to twitch it back. So I might give this thing a couple pops. One, two, let it pause. One, two, three, let it pause. One, two, let it pause. One, two, three, and continue that process right there. That's a very basic way to work a fluke. If you guys didn't know, this is pretty much a soft plastic jerk bait. So you can pretty much throw it on any of this cover, throw it out there, hits the water, jerk, 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 let it sink. And you can pretty much play with your pause. If you want to pause it for 10 seconds, you can pause it for 10 seconds. If you want to pause it for two seconds, you can pause it for two seconds. That's what I like about the fluke. And more importantly, that's what I love about fishing because there's no real sufficient. So that's a very basic way to work a fluke. All you guys probably already know that, that fish a fluke, um, but that's very basic. Now, the way that I started fishing a fluke, especially in tough conditions, right now that you guys are watching this video, you guys might be watching this at a different time of year right now, but when I'm putting this video out, it's summertime right now. It is very hot. There's fish and there's bass, especially largemouth. They love lay downs, they love cover. So what they're gonna do on a hot summer day, especially on a river like this, they're gonna tuck up against that cover. So those lay downs that are in the water, those bass are gonna tuck up right against that in the heat of the day. So it's very important to target those things. So what I'm going to do is if I target a nice lay down along the bank, I'm like, man, that really looks like there's going to be a fish there. It's a good piece of cover. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fluke, I'm going to toss it out there, and I'm going to let it hit right next to that cover, and I'm just going to let it sit. I'm not going to move it one bit. I'm just going to let it sit like this. Every once in a while, I kind of barely lift my line just to feel if there's a fish on there. Barely lift my line, maybe pop it a few times, just let it sit. Lift up a little bit, make sure there's not a fish on it, pop it a few times. Let it sit. Now I'll be like, all right, there's not a fish there. I'm going to reel back in. Now there's another lay down. I'm going to throw that lay down. Boom. Repeat the process. Let that bait sit there. This is one of the best techniques for when the bass are super finicky. They're not super aggressive. They don't want to fish anything. That's why I say a fluke is an awesome bait. It's very versatile because you can't do that with a lot of baits. You know, a lot of the baits you either throw in, you reel in, you can't really do much with it. But with a fluke, you can either jerk it in really fast or you can actually work it really slow on that cover. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't see many people do that with a fluke, but I'm telling you, throw your fluke out there, let it hit the cover, don't even move it. Just let that thing sit. And if there's a fish on that cover, he's more than likely gonna eat that fluke. And if he doesn't, you move on to the next lay down. So that's one of the best ways that you can work a fluke. It's a very versatile bait. Go out there, give it a shot, throw it out there on some of those lay downs and just let it sit. You know, the average person is gonna throw it out there and start jerking the heck out of that thing. And that is fine, you know, this, this fish might be a little bit more active that, that day, they might wanna chase something. But let me tell you, next time you're on the water, try out that little technique, throw your bait out there, just let it sit, dead stick it completely, 
check your bait every once in a while, give it a couple little sporadic pops just in case the bass is nose down at it. I'm telling you, that'll help you catch some more fish. Let's go ahead and talk about the next rig. All right, so we talked about the fluke. We talked about how it can be a great bait to find those bass, you know, work it a little fast, but it can also be a great slow moving bait by just dead sticking that on the cover. Especially in the summertime, those largemouth love wood. They're gonna tuck up against those lay downs. You guys need to try that, I'm telling you. Take that fluke out there and go dead stick it on some cover. Come back to my videos and tell me how many fish you end up catching. So I'm telling you, it can be very deadly. And another bait that would be good for that is also just a standard trick worm. Rig a standard trick worm on straight shank hook, do the same thing. Just throw it on cover, dead stick it. Don't even twitch it, don't move it. You know, people out there throw floating worms, just throw a regular finesse worm out there on that tree. Don't even move it. You'll catch just as many bass as if you're throwing this fluke. So now we're gonna talk about the next rig. This is a basic Texas rig. We talked about this in plenty of videos, but there's a couple things I wanna talk about that you guys probably won't know. So right here, I have a basic 1 4 ounce lead weight on a 4 aught EWG hook. You guys are probably asking, Noah, why do you use lead weights? Well, out here on the river, Ogeechee River, Savannah River, there's a lot of mudfish. If you guys don't know what a mudfish is, it's like a dogfish. Um, they'll break you off. They have little teeth. And let me tell you, they're aggravating. And um, when you're out here trying to catch bass and those things are just biting the heck out of you, it can get annoying because you'll break off a ton of rigs. Therefore, I use, you know, regular lead weights instead of tungsten because I lose a lot. Um, so it saves a little bit of money, um, but you can go with the tungsten weight as well to also be a little bit more sensitive. But for this video, I'm just using a basic lead weight, a standard 3 aught EWG, and those are in the stout wide gap hooks as well. So when you're throwing a Texas rig, there's a couple different baits that you can put on it. And I think they all have their time in place. We're going to start off by talking about the clout. And a lot of you guys already know about the clout. We've caught some big fish on it. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about colors. A lot of you guys always ask about colors. Noah, what color should I throw? There's so many soft plastic colors out there. When and why should I throw this bait? Okay, so we have two colors right here. I keep it very basic. Guys, you're going to learn one thing about me when it comes to bass fishing. I keep stuff very basic. So we have two packs of six cents clouts right here. Two different colors. Let's talk about the first one. So if you guys are fishing clear water, you know, it's not too dirty, it's not stained, it's not super chocolate milk muddy water. You know, you're fishing fairly clear water. It's got a good bit of visibility. I would suggest a green pumpkin, a watermelon, or like a watermelon red. Those are the three basics in clean, clean water. Or if you're fishing a place like even Lake Lanier, spotted bass out there, they love morning dawn. They love a light pink. Um, but any colors like that, your green pumpkins, your watermelons, your watermelon reds, um, your morning dawns, those are going to be good in clear water. That has a lot of visibility. And that's what I have right here, basic green pumpkin clout. Very basic. And this fish will munch that thing up in clear water. Does that mean you can't throw it in dirty water? No. This color right here, green pumpkin, I believe will work anywhere. Dirty water, clear water, anywhere. But if I was going to throw it anywhere, it'd be clear water. Um, but let's, uh, let's talk about the dirty water color. This is one of my favorites. We have a few colors. Um, this one is actually called dark water bug. It kind of already explains itself. As you guys can tell, I only have one left in the package. Um, but let me show you this color right here. This is my favorite one. These are also by six cents. Like I said, if you guys want to go check them out, I'll drop the link down below. But this one actually has half black and half purple with blue flake. This is by far my favorite dirty water bug of all time or dirty water color of all time. Um, I've used it a ton on Texas rigs and this one right here just catches them out here on the river. This dirty water bug is my favorite color. But what are some other baits for dirty and stained water? Um, some of the colors I like to live by, you know, June bug is a great color. Great, great color. I mean, when it comes down to it, if there's a clear water color that everyone knows about is either watermelon red or it's green pumpkin. And if there's a dirty water color, it's either black and blue or June bug. Those are two of the basic dirty water colors. Um, June bug, black and blue you got june bug red that's really good um you got this dirty water bug which i just absolutely love one of my favorite colors um you got black and red black and red kills it let me tell you it's the same as black and blue just with red flake and um, there's a bunch of other darker colors but dark colors for dirty water if you're fishing stained water chocolate milk use these dark colors there's actually a color that me and my buddy bradley love to throw it's actually called sapphire blue i want to say I um, mean, it's just that bright blue that also works amazing in dirty water. And we've caught a lot of good fish on that. But let's go ahead and rig this bait up. It's gonna be basic like the fluke. Um, so we got our EWG hook, we got our Senko. We're gonna rig it right through the head of it. Like I said, with the fluke, we're gonna pop it through, rig our bait all the way up on top. Boom, just like that. We're gonna lay it, figure out where we need to penetrate the hook. Boom, bury the end of the hook. 
you got yourself a weedless Sanko right there. And then we got our little one fourth ounce of weight. Boom, right there. And so let's talk about where you want to throw this bait. So this bait's going to be really great around cover. If you're fishing cover, if you're fishing grass, it's going to be great. Um, now let me tell you, if you're fishing a lot of ponds that are very shallow, there is a way that you could catch a lot more fish. You need to take this one fourth ounce of weight off so it's just weightless. You got Senko and EWG hook. If you're fishing really so shallow water or a bunch of slop, that will catch a lot of fish, especially in ponds. Weightless Senko just kills it. You could also throw a wacky rig that'll catch a lot of fish as well. But if you're fishing cover or deeper water, right there, just put that little bullet weight on there, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. So let's go ahead and throw this on some of these laydowns. We're gonna talk about how it would work this bait. All right, we got our Senko right here. We're gonna talk about a couple of different ways to fish it. Very basic, man, very basic. You're gonna throw it out there on those laydowns, on that cover, on that grass, whatever you're fishing. You're gonna let it hit the bottom. That's very important with this bait. It's a bottom bait, so you're gonna to wanna to work this thing on the bottom. It's not like, like that fluke. You don't have to wait till that hits the bottom. That's somewhat of a moving bait. It's something that a fish will chase. Um, if you're fishing any worms or crawls, you're gonna to need to work that on the bottom. So we're just gonna throw it out there. There's a couple different ways to work it. Um, very basic way that almost everybody fishes, you know, a Senko, a Texas rig, a shaky head, any sort of bottom bait, just basically hopping it on the bottom. You know, just kinda, just like this. Making sure you're keeping bottom contact, making sure that bait's on the bottom, and just hopping your bait. Very basic. And that, you know, that can catch fish. But let me tell you, you're gonna go out there and there's gonna be some days where those fish are not wanting to bite. You know, that summer bite, super hot outside, those fish are just not wanting to eat anything. Now this is when I'll throw my bait out there on that cover, just like I was talking about with that fluke. Let it sink to the bottom, and I don't even move it. And you just dead stick it. That's called dead sticking the bait. Let me tell you, there's going to be days where you're going to need that technique. So if you guys don't know about dead sticking, if you've never done it before, next time you're not catching fish, go out there, dead stick your bait, and watch how much more fish you catch. That is a great way of catching them when they're really finicky. And then there's one more way that I do. Personally, there's not a lot of people who fish it like this. A lot of people fish it like this when they're bed fishing and when they're trying to get a bass's attention to eat a bait. Um, I'll throw my bait out there on the tree. I'll let it hit the bottom. And then this is what I'll do. Instead of just straight up hopping it or dragging it, I'll actually hold my line to where there's no slack in my line and I'm just going to hit the back of my rod just like that. And what it's going to do is that worm's going to be on the bottom. Since I have no slack in my line, when I hit this, what that worm's going to do is just going to be like this, fluttering at the bottom. It's not going to have enough movement for that bait to be hopping back towards you like you were going like this, hopping your bait, but it's going to keep that bait in the same spot and when you're hitting this, the tail is just going to wag. Let me tell you, that is a killer way as well. If you guys can't catch any fish, go try that. So next time you're on the water and you don't have many bites, throw it out there, work it the way that you normally would. And then you then you think in the back of your head, they're like, you know what, Noah told me to dead stick this thing. Go try that. And if they're not biting that, go try what I just told you. You know, throw your bait out there, work it very slow, pretty much dead stick it, but hit the bottom of your, of your rod. So what that's gonna do is say we threw it out there and we're dead sticking it. That worm is just on the bottom, okay? And that bass just comes up and he's just looking at that bait. But he's not doing anything. Once you start to hit, the, hit your rod and that tail just starts moving, that could create a reaction on that bass. Bass are predators and they react to movement. If that bass starts to see that worm moving and it does something weird, he's gonna go engulf that bait. So that can be a great way. You know, if they're not eating it while they're dead sticking it, start playing around with that. Give it a little bit of movement, not much, give it a little bit and that would probably help you catch more bass. Since we talked about a couple baits that you need to be throwing to catch more fish, if you aren't throwing these baits, you need to go out there and throw them. Are these gonna catch the biggest bass in the world? Maybe, okay? They're not gonna be big bass hunters, but you are gonna be able to put a bunch of fish on the boat or a bunch of fish on the bank using these baits just about anywhere in any time of the year. That's why I love these and that's why I wanted to talk about them. So now since we talked about some of those baits right there, one thing I would like you guys to do is drop a comment down below on what other tip videos you wanna see we're gonna go ahead and actually go fishing with these baits and catch some fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. Hit that freaking like button. Drop some tip videos down below. Let's go ahead and get it started. Hell yeah. That's not a bad one. That's not a bad one at all. This is a... Uh, it... Whoa. <laughs> what Bro, happened? I just lost one at the boat, trying to mess with your behind. Mess with my behind? Bro, you just got my whole cheddar bait. You could have had a double up, Bradley. <laughs> oh my god. That's a pretty fish, though. Look at the colors on them out here. There we go. My first fish, boys and girls, on the fluke.
working back in this little creek. See if we can catch some more. That was good. Bradley had to bite at the same exact time and missed them. We got three bites right here. Crazy. <gasps> That's a bass, bro. I skipped right under that tree. That was crazy. That's a good one. Right there, guys. I skipped that fluke right up on duty. <laughs> that was really cool. Blew up on it like a topwater. That is a pretty bass right there. That's a beautiful Ogeechee one. That's a good one, Bradley. That's one that you need. I mean, he's fat, probably about a pound and a half. Look at his thick belly. That was a really cool bite. Skipping that thing up on the tree, that was so cool. Beautiful markings. That's what I love about these fish in that tannic water. Beautiful colors. Go ahead and give them just a little toss. Get a little up close release. Come on, Bradley, double up before it leaves my hands. Beautiful fish. Look at the markings on that. You can't see the lateral line as much, but it's pretty colors. There he goes. That bite was really cool. Yeah. You have a fish! Or a tree. No, you got a dang good one too. I swallowed it. No, I didn't. That's a good one. That's a two pounder. Dude, good that's one. a good one. Yo, that was funny. You literally picked up your rod and it was just going. <laughs> it almost went in the water.